Hey, deserving listeners. So I recently posted a question on YouTube asking y'all to suggest one-off videos for me to react to. And one of the most upvoted uh, items was the song Mother I Sober by Kendrick Lamar. Let's watch and I will react. And by the way, I found this version on YouTube on Fantastic Lyrics is the YouTube channel and they provide the, the lyrics so we can follow along. And my name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and professor. Hmm, it's a nice little simple It's nice. Okay, so just chiming in here, I've already made this whole episode and I edited the whole episode and uploaded it. It's about an hour long and I got a copyright notice from YouTube. So I kept trying to edit it to make it acceptable to YouTube and also to Kendrick Lamar's label, I assume, and nothing was working. So I basically just had to mute all of the music. It makes it a bit of a weird reaction video. So you're just gonna have to imagine <laughs> or open up another tab and watch that video and listen along uh, on that other tab and then chime and then go back to my video and see what I'm reacting to. I, I don't know any other way to do it. So I apologize for that. I'm also shortening the video clips. Otherwise you're just watching 20 seconds of silence, which wouldn't be very interesting. And I knew that there would likely be some sort of copyright issue, but usually they just let you share the revenue or the label takes all of the revenue. But what was happening is that YouTube was saying they weren't going to allow anybody to even view the video. So this is the only thing I could do. All right, so first impression, he talks about something that happened when he was five. I think it sounds like his mother experienced some sort of trauma and he witnessed it and he wished that he could have protected her, I think is what Kendrick is referring to. So the lyrics thus far are evocative, powerful, and the performance is unique and moving and specific. Also, the style of the lyrics so far, at least to me, is impressionistic. It's not clear exactly what he's referring to. Maybe it'll become more clear. I assume the song is about sobriety and about substance use, but there hasn't been any specific reference to that so far. But, you know, there's a lot of abstract things being talked about. But there's something quite specific here, which is uh, I sh mother cried, put the hands on her. It was family ties, I heard it all. I should have grabbed a gun. I was only five. I still feel it weighing on my heart, my first tough decision. I don't know, but that sounds like he, Kendrick, witnessed something that his mother went through, some sort of trauma, maybe violent trauma, I'm not sure, when he was five and he still feels it weighing on his heart. He, it was his first tough decision. He should have grabbed a gun. I don't know, but the at least... Uh, and you know, when you talk to artists about their lyrics, whether it be songs or poems, they will say, look, interpret it the way that you want to interpret it. I'm not going to walk you through it. And all of us are free to let it do its magic on us, right? And so what it's doing to me is that it's evoking a scene in which you have a young boy who is witnessing his mother go through something negatively, uh, traumatically. And of course he wants to protect her and is very affected by it. It makes me want to cry thinking about it and how he beats himself up about it and how even as an adult, he thinks, oh, I should have grabbed a gun. I should have protected her. That was a tough decision and it's weighing on my heart. I think meaning I I regret it, I feel guilty, I feel shame. Which of course all of us would say to that adult, whether they're remembering or whether we're talking to the five-year-old, that's not your responsibility. It's not your fault. You, should, you shouldn't feel ashamed. What else could you have done? Okay, and the shadows cling to my soul as my only critic. Where's my faith? Told you I was Christian, but just not today. I transform, pray into the trees. God is taking shape. Okay. 
Okay, so he's referring to his grandmother and how he felt her presence, uh, maybe even seeing her at times in public. And he loved her dearly, and he traded in his tears for a Range Rover. What that evokes in me is that experience that we have where, well, maybe specifically for artists like this, their creativity makes them money and gives them the ability to buy a Range Rover. And that pain ironically leads to materialism or, you know, it's a weird connection. I imagine for artists like Kendrick Lamar, there's a bit of a, a conundrum there of my experiences, my pain, my traumas, the difficulties that my family have gone through, maybe even transgenerationally, gives me the material and the motivation and that special something that makes someone's art compelling and universal. And then I get to buy a Range Rover. Okay, so Beth Gibbons from Portishead fame, she is from my generation. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know if people would say that, but Portishead in the 90s was a big deal. Kendrick's saying, transformation, you ain't felt grief till you felt it sober. I don't know if this is what he's referring to, but we, well, at least most of us, I think, understand that when we go through pain, psychological pain, we will resort to a lot of things to cope with it. And if we don't have support or we don't have models to follow that felt their feelings and showed us how to feel our feelings and we weren't parented in a way that made us feel like we could feel our feelings in a healthy way, then we will look toward other solutions such as soap substances to numb the pain and distract us, give us something to do. And when we feel grief while we're using substances, it's different, you know, you, you don't really feel it. Uh, then when you feel it sober, that that's when you really feel the grief. I'm curious what he's referring to regarding this transformation. I love the production. There's just a simple kick drum and then the piano. I think there's a little bit of a, a synth bass underneath it. And also you hear these, uh, it's also, uh, you, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, they're on different panning, right? Left, right, middle. You hear these vocalizations, harmonies, and I like that kind of thing as a songwriter myself. Uh, I hear that and I, I like that style. Uh, uh, why do I like that style? Well, I, I grew up in church and I, as a young kid, would listen to people harmonizing. You know, the, the main melody would be sung by everyone in the church, but I would hear these, these like musical people that understood harmony and without even seeing it on the page, they just knew where that third or where that fifth was and they could stay in key. And I, I just, I remember listening to them. Oh, that's like, how do they do that? Well, so uh, only child, me for seven years, everything for Christmas, I think meaning that he felt kind of spoiled because he didn't have to compete with other siblings family ties. They accused my cousin, did he touch you? So there's a pretty specific scene that's being evoked here of family maybe accusing his cousin of touching Kendrick. And they go to Kendrick and they ask him, did your cousin touch you? Never lied, but no one believed me when I said he didn't. He saying, I never lied, but no one believed me when I said that he didn't touch me. So, huh. Yeah. Frozen moments, still holding on it. Hard to trust myself. Frozen moments, still holding on it. So I'm, I'm thinking this is referring to those snapshot moments in time in his past that he is still holding on to. He says, hard to trust myself. I don't know if that's referring to that experience. I'll just say what it evokes in me. I don't, I don't know what is exactly being communicated, but what it's doing to me and my soul is that he was not heard, was asked, did your cousin touch you? And he's saying, no. And people didn't believe him. And I feel like I've 
I know more about this story because I've I've learned about it, or it was another song where the family actually went after the cousin somehow, punished him, and Kendrick was like, but he didn't touch me, and no one was listening to him, and he, he felt bad. I, I don't know if that's true, but you could see a young child, it's almost like gaslighting in a sense, that everyone is acting like it did happen, and you're saying, no, it didn't. And maybe even people are saying, well, there's repressed memories or you're too ashamed to admit it. And then when you're older, you you look back on it and you think, well, maybe he did touch me and I just am in denial of it. You know, that's a thing. Is that what's happening? I can't trust myself now. That would be what's at least being evoked in me. And said, I started rhyming, coping mechanisms to lift myself up. So that's artistry and expression and you can imagine a lot of emotion being processed through, you know, especially his style. And he says, talk to my lawyer, told me not to be so hard on myself. That's interesting that his lawyer gets gets in there. <laughs> I wonder what's going on there. So there's a nature theme. There were trees. I was wondering earlier if that was referring to marijuana, but uh, he is having, there's a theme of of water and trees and nature and only thing relieves me. And so I guess the lawyer is being referred to because he has an aura, something he hopes to achieve. If I find help, if I find some help, congratulations, made it to be famous, still I feel uneasy. So he's telling himself, you know, congratulations, you're famous, you've achieved your goal, but it hasn't solved your problems. Again, referring to this moment, did he touch you? I said, no, again, still they don't believe me. Mother's brother said he got revenge for my mother's face. Mother's brother said he got revenge for my mother's face. At least what that evokes to me is that his mom was harmed violently, physically, and her brother got revenge on the perpetrator. I don't know. So there's that line again, you never felt guilt till you felt it sober. Again, what it's evoking in me, in me is that he is, for the first time at some point in his adult life, finally feeling his emotions sober, and all of these images are coming to the forefront. His mom, black and blue, he can't, he can't erase that image. To this day, I can't look into her eyes. I think, again, because he blames himself, he's being more explicit here about self-blame that he couldn't protect her he should have done something different yeah yeah. trauma is the gift that keeps on giving it's a a funny way of putting it Uh, and i don't mean to make it funny but it is a phrase that i often think about in this sardonic way that when we're traumatized it's horrible in the moment obviously and that trauma just keeps visiting us these effects of blame and shame and coping and pain and self-hatred and not trusting yourself, pushing back on other people, distancing yourself. But it's maybe what I'm hearing, but it also sounds like he's recovering, right? Sobriety, feeling the feelings, going to nature, uh, having a role model, his lawyer. And then the, you know, the chorus, I wish I was somebody, anybody but myself, I'm assuming Kendrick Lamar wrote that lyric and Beth Gibbons is singing it in her way. So it's, you know, it's a common feeling. I think a majority, if not everyone, has had some version of this feeling at times. Some people have this feeling a lot. There's always that moment, you know. I just I just wish I wasn't myself right now. All right, so at least what this is evoking in me is he's talking about how He is insecure at times, and he projects that. I I don't know what he means by that specifically, but it could mean that he will uh, project that on other people, his partner, uh, uh, Whitney. Maybe that's his partner. And then he will sleep with other women as a way of dealing with that insecurity. And Whitney's hurt by that. And she's the purest soul that he knows. I found her in the kitchen asking God, where did I lose myself and, and, and can it be forgiven? 
maybe this is referring to he overheard her talking to herself, reacting to his infidelity and the pain that he was putting her through. At least that's what I'm hearing, but I don't know if that's exactly what he's saying. All right, book me down. She looked me in the eyes. Is there an addiction? Maybe sex addiction is being referred to. I'm not sure. I said no, but this time I lied. So that echo of that previous no regarding no, my cousin didn't touch me. I didn't lie back then, but this time I did lie when I said no, there is an, an addiction. I knew that I can't fix it. Pure soul, even in her pain. Okay, gave me a number. Maybe this is still Whitney, and she recommended some therapy. And then that opened some doors, sounds like. Then she went to her mom because of the trauma. Maybe this is you know, something that came up in therapy regarding when he was a kid. And he goes to his mom and says, you know, why didn't you believe me when I told you no about my cousin? I never knew she was violated in Chicago. I'm sympathetic. So maybe, if, I, I don't know. But what this is doing to me is he learns, well, what really was going on was that his mom had been violated in Chicago and he's sympathetic, and that's why the mom didn't believe him when he said no, because the mom had this history. Yeah, it sounds like that's what's being communicated here. It told me that she feared it happened to me, you know, meaning that it happened to her. She was worried it happened to him, and for his protection, she didn't believe him when he said no, because maybe she said no when she was a kid, even though it did happen to her. Though it never happened, she would agree. Now I'm affected 20 years later, trauma has resurfaced. All right, so I'm just gonna chime in here and tell you that I'm recording this bit after I listened to this whole song and reacted. And what I'll tell you is that I go on quite a journey, because the song takes you on quite a journey. The song took me on quite a journey, including bawling my eyes out at a certain point. So I'm going to tell you all that because the rest of this video is just for members of the YouTube channel. Those are the folks that give me the money, frankly, so that I can pull time away from my other career and dedicate time to making these kinds of videos. So I want to reward them for that. And the rest of this video, uh, th this, this entire video, I think will be over an hour long because there's so much to absorb and how it affects me and so much to observe. So uh, if you want to watch this entire video, become a member by clicking the join button below or by clicking the URL in the description. And everyone, please listen to this song and take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.